At this time, I'd like to invite Anthony Avildsen to the stage. In 1967, my dad, John, it's him right there, behind the camera as usual. Uh, in 67, he got his first job directing by answering an ad in the newspaper that literally said wanted film director. Uh, a year later, I made my big screen debut in his second film, an impossible to find film called Sweet Dreams. Uh, like a couple of the other adult cast in that movie, my role required me to be completely naked and to giggle a lot. Uh, in 1970, uh, people started to take him a little more seriously when he made a movie called Joe with uh, Peter Boyle and a very young Susan Sarandon. Uh, that movie went on to become the highest grossing independent film of that year, despite the fact that I wasn't in it. Uh, in 1973, he directed a film called Save the Tiger, a personal favorite of mine, with uh, Jack Lemmon, uh, who won the Best, uh, Oscar, Best Actor Oscar for that. Uh, I received no accolades for my role as young boy in the background at Drinking Fountain. <laughs> A couple years later, uh, my brother Jonathan and I were with my dad in uh, South Philly, scouting locations for a movie that he was preparing to make. <clears throat> and normally when you're, say you're scouting locations in South Philly, it means you're looking for a place to dump a body. <laughs> but we were actually looking for a gym where the main character, Rocky Balboa, would train for his uh, title fight with the champ. So after that, dad got real busy uh, in 1980 a movie called The Formula with Marlon Brando and uh, George C. Scott. I wasn't in that. In uh, 1981, a movie called Neighbors with uh, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. I wasn't in that either. And in 1983, a uh, movie called A Night in Heaven with Christopher Atkins, uh, most notable because I was in that one. Uh, but despite my involvement, I think even my dad would agree that it wasn't the, it wasn't the greatest movie. But things got a lot better the next year when he directed a little movie called The Karate Kid, followed by The Karate Kid Part Two. I wasn't in either of those. Uh, but my brother was in Karate Kid Part Three. He played Snake, one of the bad guys. Uh, I wouldn't reappear on screen until 1989's Lean On Me with uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, I had a line in that, a word, actually. The word was Commonwealth. It was good enough for residuals. Uh, I also got to work as a production assistant on that movie, and uh, working on that film in the summer of 1988 at Patterson High School in Patterson, New Jersey, was uh, the ultimate summer job. Uh, I also worked as a production assistant on Rocky V, which my dad directed. And uh, I'll tell you quickly a little story you probably don't know about that movie. In the original script, uh, Rocky dies at the end. He's uh, mortally wounded after a street fight and dies in Adrian's arms. And that was one of the main reasons that my dad wanted to do it. However, well after production had started, word came from the producers that Rocky wasn't going to die. Uh, they, I think, told him that James Bond doesn't die, Batman doesn't die, and Rocky doesn't die. <laughs> uh, and as disappointing as it must have been to get that news, uh, you know, my dad didn't quit. He finished the movie the, as, you know, to the best of his ability. Uh, and that's the way he works on all the films I've seen him work on. Uh, his level of commitment is total, uh, from when he's scribbling on scripts, to filming auditions, to filming rehearsals, to working over storyboards, to getting input from the cast, the writer, the director of photography, and even the producers. Uh, he stays inside the movie until they rip it away from him. Uh, he can be stubborn, but he's always fair. Uh, and ultimately, I think he just wants to tell a story that people can relate to. Uh, so for that reason, and the fact that he's put me in a bunch of stuff, I say congratulations, Dad. I love you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Anthony, for that terrific 
introduction. I told Anthony he was being modest because he didn't mention one of his parts. He and his brother Jonathan were also in Slow Dancing, one of my more forgettable movies, unfortunately. Um, this is a, a real uh, treat, and I couldn't be more pleased to, uh, to be here. Um, if anybody has any questions about uh, uh, my movies, or movies in general, I'd be happy to answer them. Also, I'd like to plug my, I have a book that just came out about me. Called, uh, <laughs> called uh, the, the films of John G. Avelson, Rocky, The Karate Kid, and, un and other underdogs. That's on Amazon. And a documentary just started uh, trying to raise funds on Kickstarter, uh, inspired by, uh, by that book. So if anybody wants to invest in a documentary, which is a surefire way of throwing your money away. Um, but you get all sorts of stuff, t-shirts and what have you. Um, that's on uh, Kickstarter. And, and if you put up a lot of serious money, uh, we go to Hawaii together. Um, so, any questions? Any answers? Yes, the young lady. Which is my favorite movie? Well, the stock answer is, oh, they're my, all my children. And how can you have one? I think, though, uh, Karate Kid is. Uh, mostly because so many people have uh, told me uh, how that uh, movie uh, uh, helped them get through <clears throat> their adolescence. Um, which is never easy. And I want to encourage these, uh, this young man here who won a, a prize for making a movie and uh, all of the rest of the uh, nominees and winners, uh, winners at the uh, festival this evening, don't give up. That's a big part of this racket. Perseverance. And do anything. I remember when I was starting out, my friends, I would take you know, some pretty crummy movies. And he said, how can you, how can you do that? that? I said, because I'm gonna learn something from doing it. Every time you do one of these things, you learn something. Uh, so never say no. Uh, doing it is the, is the best experience. And everybody can make a movie now. Everybody's got a video camera or an iPhone. That's all you need. And the story. Without the story, you're whistling Dixie. So, uh, any other questions? Yes? Uh, who is your favorite actor or actors to work with in your time? What were my favorite actors working? Well, certainly Sylvester Stallone on the first uh, Rocky, because he was a starving actor, and uh, there's nothing better than a starving actor. He was, uh, <laughs> he was terrific and very, very uh, responsive uh, to uh, uh, suggestions. And if you go to YouTube, and put in uh, Rocky director spills the beans, you get a lot of uh, Sylvester stories. Um, uh, Marlon Brando was also uh, great fun. He was a very, very uh, funny guy. Uh, Morgan Freeman uh, was uh, an incredible actor and a, and a real uh, gent. Ralph Macchio, Pat Morita. Uh, I was uh, I was blessed uh, with having some uh, terrific actors and actresses. Susan Sarandon in her first movie, Joe, and the writers. You can't do this without some words on a page. I have never been able to fill up a page. Now, if somebody else fills it up. Then I'll say, yeah, but what about this, and why don't you do this? But looking at an empty page is terrifying. So when somebody else fills it up and I respond to it, uh, I'm in love with that person. Because uh, uh, that's where it all begins, with the words that somebody's got to come up with. And then uh, 
If I'm lucky, I get uh, called to say action. Uh, but I can't do it without uh, uh, the writer. Thank you. Uh, anything, anyone else? Yes. What is the most difficult lesson you ever learned as a director? The most difficult lesson I ever learned? Hmm. Uh, I was going to do uh, uh, Peter Sellers' uh, last movie. We didn't realize it was going to be his last movie, but it turned out to be, uh, uh, called Fu Manchu. And uh, he and I got along real well. He thought I was the next Stanley Kubrick. I went over to France and had lunch on his yacht when he was there for the Cannes, fin Cannes Film Festival. He was terrific. Just couldn't have had a, a nicer time. Uh, and then when uh, I got back to the U.S., I got the word that he had decided to make the movie himself. But I was pay or play, which means that at a certain point, the studio says, okay, we want to lock you in on this contract. And even if we don't make the movie, or if we decide not to make it with you, you get paid. Not bad. So, Peter Sellers said, you know, I'm going to direct this thing myself. But I still got paid. And I didn't have to get up so early in the morning. And I thought, wow, this is terrific. Now, around the same time, I got the script for the formula. I got the, the, the manuscript from the book. And I read this thing, and a good friend of mine wrote it. The guy who wrote and, and produced uh, Save the Tiger. And I read this thing, and I... I couldn't figure it out. I, I kept asking uh, Steve Shagan, why did the guy do this? And why did he do it? I don't know. What, well, what, and what about that? That doesn't. Mm. And I said, wait a second. And, and then they came to me and said, uh, do you want to uh, direct this? And I said, this is the, the expensive lesson I learned. I said, I'll say yes. And sometime before we go to shoot this thing, somebody's going to be smart enough to say, no, wait a second, this is a horrible thing. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going to make it. And I'll get paid again. I wanted to get up so early. <laughs> well, that person never showed up. Uh, and uh, we made the movie. And, and then Steve Shagan uh, suggested I get uh, Gene Hackman to play the lead. I said, no, 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 not Gene Hackman. George Scott. That's who should play the lead. And then we had lunch with George Scott, and I don't know how many boiler makers he had. That's a shot of whiskey and a beer chaser. And he was uh, uh, damning the faggots and, uh, and the peaceniks, and I still didn't get it. Uh, and we went ahead with uh, uh, George Scott. What a mistake. So that was, um, that was, uh, the most expensive uh, lesson uh, I learned. And I never made that mistake again. Any other questions? Yes? I just want to say I was saying the Karate Kid got me through my youth. And, uh, uh, the Karate Kid yeah. what? It was a beautiful movie. It got me through my childhood. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Robert Kamen, who wrote The Karate Kid, and uh, all of the Karate Kids, except this uh, last one, he was in charge of this, uh, he had this, it was the same story. And he also wrote The uh, Power of One, he wrote uh, Taken, uh, and Taken Two, and uh, uh, a lot of the Luc Brasson uh, films. Uh, Robert is a, a classic example of a terrific writer uh, who I had the most fun uh, working with. So um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you enjoyed uh, the uh, Karate Kid. I, uh, I did too. Now this young man? Um, what was the hardest movie to make? The hardest one? Um, I guess the hardest one was uh, Rocky V. Because in uh, Rocky V, when I read the uh, script, 
Rocky dies at the end. And, um, and at the end of the movie, uh, uh, he and uh, Tommy Gunn uh, have this slugfest out in the street and he takes an incredible beating. He's in the ambulance with his head in Adrian's lap on the way to the hospital and he dies. And the last scene is the steps of the hospital, the world's press is assembled, and Adrian comes out and says, as long as people, as long as, as, as long as people believe in themselves, Rocky's spirit will live forever. I thought, wow, that is terrific. <laughs> And, and Sylvester wrote this. I said, that, let's do it. This is a terrific, what a way to go out. And uh, then, as Anthony pointed out, um, they changed their mind. So um, that was, uh, that was, that was very painful. <laughs> but listen, making movies is so much fun that even when it's terrible, it's fun. Uh, and when, when it works and people respond the way you hope that they will respond, whoo, it's great. Any others? Yes. One more. Uh, John, firstly, congratulations again. And uh, what's next? Oh boy, I wish, I wish I knew. I've got a great script called Nate Now about a, a, a band of wisecracking Holocaust survivors who uh, tracked down the Nazi prison guard that gave them a tough time and killed their families and they kidnap them. It's a terrific story. But, um, um, and an uh, 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 Orange County resident, uh, Noah Taft, wrote the... Uh, the script, and it's a great script, anybody's got eight and a half million bucks on them, um, we can make a terrific movie. So hopefully it will be that, but um, um, it's not in, uh, it hasn't been chiseled in stone yet. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen, I sure hope it does. And again, thank you all very, very much for this, uh, this great honor. I'd like to give you the Lifetime Achievement Award as a director. Well, thank you, sir.